Hey, what's up, internet? This is Jordan Bertone from Sonduck Film, and you're probably wondering, who am I? I've been doing some of the tutorials over the past couple of weeks, but it's been just my voice and Josh's face. Well, I'm tired of it not being my face, so I decided to break into Josh's studio and do it myself. Anyways, today we have a great tutorial on motion glass morphism. This type of effect is awesome for creating overlays on your footage in motion graphics. You'll be able to separate backgrounds from titles and graphics. And I don't mean that type of motion glass. Be sure to hit that like button because if you don't, Josh can't pay me and I can't feed my family. You don't have a family. All right, so the goal of this tutorial is to create an effect like we see in this composition where the glass layers move across the screen and warp the footage layer underneath of them. To start off, we're going to make our glass map layer, and to do that, we're going to go up and select Layer, New, Solid, then set the dimensions of the solid to 1080 by 1080. We're doing this because we need the glass map to be a perfect square, and then click OK. Now, right-click the solid, select Pre-Compose, we're going to name this pre-comp Glass Map, then make sure Leave All Attributes is selected, and click OK. Open up the pre-comp, highlight the solid that we just made, then go to Effect, Generate, Fill, Effect, Transition, Linear Wipe, and Effect, Generate, CC Light Sweep. For the fill, we want the color to be a very dark gray, almost black color, and then for the Linear Wipe, set the Transition Completion to 100%, set a keyframe for the completion, set the Wipe Angle to negative 70 degrees, the Feather to 2, then move to 2 seconds on the timeline and set the Transition Completion to 45%. Highlight the keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease keyframes, open up the graph editor tool and drag the right side of the curve all the way inwards to smooth out the animation. For the CC light sweep, set the direction to 111 degrees, width to 600, sweep intensity to 0, edge intensity to 150, and edge thickness to 1. Next, duplicate the solid by highlighting it and pressing Ctrl D, then we're going to add two more effects to this layer, so go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise, Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Box Blur, then put the Fractal Noise under the Fill and the Fast Box Blur underneath of that. Set the color of the fill to white, then for the Fractal Noise set the Contrast to 180, Brightness to 70, Blending Mode to Multiply, Alt-click the stopwatch for evolution, and in the Expression Controls box type in Time asterisk 45. Then set the Blur Radius of the Fast Box Blur to 6, and set the Transition Completion of the Linear Wipe to 65% at the 2 second mark on the timeline. Now, duplicate this solid, and in the Effect Controls panel, set the Contrast of the Fractal Noise to 125, the Brightness to 30, and set the Transition Completion to 70%. Duplicate the layer again, set the Brightness of the Fractal Noise to 35, and the Transition Completion to 75%. Then, duplicate the layer one more time, set the color to a light gray, and the Transition Completion to 80%. Lastly, back out of the pre-comp, then highlight it, press S to adjust the scale, uncheck Constrain Proportions, set the X value to 180%, press T to adjust the opacity, and set the opacity to 15%. Now that our glass map is done, I'm going to take some stock footage that I have in my project window and drag it onto the timeline underneath of the glass map so that it overlays on top of it. If you like the style of motion graphics in this video and you want a quick and easy way to add them to your projects, with the click of a button, check out our Motion Graphics Professionals Pack. It includes over 1400 advanced and professional motion graphics to enhance your projects and make them stand out. With our easy to use AdamX extension, all you have to do is find a graphic you like and hit apply. Once it's out on the timeline, you can easily customize the composition with our simple to use control layers and edit the different elements to fit your needs. And just like that, you have a stunning custom composition to use in your projects. Check out the link in the description or visit sonduckfilm.com for more info. Now that we have our main pre-comp, we can start working on the displacement map layer. First, go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, put the adjustment layer underneath of the pre-comp and we'll rename the layer to Displace, then go to Effect, Stylize, Motion Tile, and Effect, Distort, Displacement Map. For the motion tile, all we need to do is increase the output width and height to 200 and then enable Mirror Edges. Then, for the displacement map, set the displacement map layer to our glass map pre-comp, set the max horizontal displace to 50, use for vertical displace to red, max vertical displacement to 50, displacement map behavior to stretch, and check the box for wrap pixels around. And now you have the start of the glass displacement effect that we're going for. Next, we're going to sharpen our glass layer by editing our first pre-comp. To do this, navigate to the project panel, duplicate the glass map pre-comp, then click and drag that new pre-comp onto the timeline at the top of the layer list. 
change the x value of the scale for this new pre-comp to 180 just like we did for the first pre-comp and then do the same with the opacity by setting it to 15% again. Now go into the pre-comp, highlight the first solid, set the color of the fill to black, copy that fill effect, and then paste the fill effect over the fill on every solid in the pre-comp. Next, go through each solid layer and delete the fractal noise and fast box blur effect from all of them. Lastly, back out of the pre-comp and then duplicate it and now you can see that we've added some depth to the glass layers by darkening them a bit and making the edges more pronounced. The last thing we're going to do is add a glass texture and blend all of our layers together to finish off our composition. Take your glass texture and drag it onto the timeline and make sure it's placed above the glass map and underneath of the modified glass maps. To get a glass texture like the one I'm using, simply go to any stock footage website and search for something like glass texture or lens texture and you'll find something similar pretty easily. Next, change the mode of the glass map and the texture layer to screen, then change the mode of the modified glass maps to add. If you don't see the mode dropdowns, go to the bottom of the window and click the toggle switches and modes button. As you can see, the glass texture kind of washed out the composition a bit, so we're going to add a new adjustment layer, put it at the top of the layer list, then go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves, and Effect, Stylize, CC Vignette. For the curve, simply click and drag the center of the curve down into the right a little bit, just like this, until the composition isn't as washed out anymore, and then leave the vignette as is. This step might be optional, depending on how the lens texture that you use affects your composition. And just like that, we're done. In no time at all, we've created this amazing glass effect that you can use to enhance your projects in After Effects. And that's how you do a glass morphism effect. If you have any questions, I really can't answer them because I gotta get out of here before Josh gets back. But of course, if you're still here, be sure to subscribe and also check out our Instagram where you can find me doing even more tutorials.